All right, today's topic is 9.2, analyzing rational functions. That's on pages 446 to 456 in your text. Our course outcome is 30.11, when you're gonna demonstrate understanding radical and rational functions with restrictions on the domain. Our lesson objectives, number one, to learn what a function or a graph that is discontinuous looks like and what the equation of that function would look like. Number two, to be able to tell the difference in a hole in a graph, an asymptote in a graph, and an x-intercept in a graph. And three, to be able to match the graph of a function with its equation. So one of the things that you should have noticed last lesson is that you can easily find the location of a vertical asymptote and an x-intercept by looking at the equation of a rational function. So for example, any factor that appeared in the numerator corresponds to the location of an x-intercept, where any factor that appeared in the denominator corresponds to the location of a vertical asymptote. So we're going to find any x-intercept and vertical asymptotes in this following rational function. f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8 divided by x squared minus 5x minus 6. So your first step that you want to do is always factor this thing. And since they're both quadratics, we can just use plain old inspection. So on the top, we're looking for two things that multiply together to give you negative 8 and add together to give you negative 2. So that'll be negative 4 and positive 2. And in the bottom, we would look for two things that multiply together to give you negative 6, but add together to give you negative 5, and that's negative 6 and positive 1. So our x-intercepts are any of our factors in the top, and that would be x minus 4 and x plus 2, which corresponds to x-intercepts of 4 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. Where in the bottom, these are the locations of our vertical asymptotes, and those are vertical lines, so they are written as equations. x equals 6, and x equals negative 1. So let's take a look at the graph of a function that has the same factor in both the numerator and the denominator. So we've got f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2, all divided by x plus 2. So by factoring the top, I get x plus 2 and x minus 1. And in the bottom, I get x plus 2. So we just said that any factor in the top is an x-intercept, and anything in the bottom is a vertical asymptote. However, when we have the same factor in both the bottom and the top, they actually cancel each other out. So x equals negative 2 isn't actually either an x-intercept or a vertical asymptote. It is what we call indeterminate. And what that ends up being is a hole in the graph. There's actually a hole in the graph. Because we can't, if we plug in a value for ne x equals negative 2 into this function, we get 0 divided by 0. If I were to plug in negative 2 right off the bat, I'd get 0 divided by 0. And that is what we call indeterminate. There isn't a value that we get as an answer. So what that looks like when we look at the graph is here we've got our our x-intercept of x equals positive 1, which we could have found from the graph, or from the equation, sorry. And there should be a hole at x equals negative 2, and that would, on your graph, look like this. So you draw a line, and then you'd put a little hole, or an open circle, at that location of x equals negative 2. So, uh, final example says, match the equation of each rational function with the most appropriate graph. Explain your reasoning. So we've got three equations here, and we've got three graphs. So let's just start by factoring um, what we can in each of the equations. So k of x is going to end up being, well, we can't factor the top, x squared plus 2. And we can factor the bottom, though. That would be x minus 2 and x plus 1. So because there's no factors in the top, this one would have no x-intercepts. And there would be two vertical asymptotes at positive 2 and negative 1. <clears throat> that corresponds with graph number 3. So right off the bat, we can find out that k of x is equal to graph number 3. l of x is x minus 1 on the top and x squared minus 1 on the bottom. Well, we can factor that to be x minus 1 and then x minus 1 on the bottom times x plus 1 because that's a difference of squares. And then we have x minus 1's cancelling off. So we get 1 over x plus 1. So that would give us um, no x-intercepts again but there should be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. And that would correspond with graph number 1. And if we look at the value of x equals positive 1, so this, where these two factors uh, cancel each other out, there should be a hole, and there it is right there. And finally, we've got m of x, which we know now is going to be graph number 2, 
because this was graph one. Um, but let's just double check. So we've got x squared minus five x plus six, all over three minus x. And x squared minus five x plus six, two things that multiply to positive six, but add to negative five will be x minus three and x minus two. Now in the bottom here, this is three minus x, but since I've noticed that this is x minus three on the top, I'm just gonna take away a greatest common factor of negative one and change that to x minus three on the bottom. So now we've got x minus three is canceling off. We're left with x minus two divided by negative one, which is the same thing as saying negative x minus two. And we can see that this is just a line. This should be a line, and here it is. And that makes it graph number two. So in summary, we know that a factor in the numerator of a rational equation corresponds to the x-intercept on the graph of the function, and we call this a zero. We know that the factor in the denominator of a rational equation corresponds to a vertical asymptote on the graph of the function. And if you remember, we call that, we used to call that undefined, and we still do. And then finally, we know that a factor that appears in both the numerator and denominator of a rational equation corresponds to a hole in the graph of the function, and we call that indeterminate. So your assignment, pages 451 to 456. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.